all time. Okay, fine, we'll deal with it. All right, so lesson planning for physical education. Since we're pretty much gonna be running a physical education class for seventh and eighth graders, we're gonna do our best to at least have a plan when we get there. Uh, I had a guy, uh, my first year of college, or my last year I was in college, uh, this guy was a PE major. He was at Rio for a while there, so Luis might remember this guy. Uh, his name is Jared Henry. Yep. So I was a senior. I was teaching a homeschool group as in when I was in college. It was actually my cousins and their homeschool play group. And they wanted me to teach physical education to them. And so I was teaching a floor hockey unit. And then the PE for children class was coming in right after me. Well, Jared and another guy both came in and, uh, to grab equipment that because I had less. They needed more because only they had more students. And I was like, what are you guys planning on teaching today? And they're like, uh, we don't know. I'm like, you guys are teaching in like two minutes. Yeah, we're just going to wing it. I'm like, I'm like, this is bad. Teachers, they were freshmen. They got better. And I was like, this is why... Physical educators sometimes have bad reps. Uh, so I made it kind of a big thing for me to make sure that people are prepared for teaching classes. So that's why we're going through how to do a lesson plan. And this is a very brief overview of what I want uh, turned in. So before instructions, please teachers make decisions that will drive the entire experience. So lesson plans critical. Uh, let's see, design and implement it should be flexible. Uh, we're going to definitely have to be flexible because I don't know how many students we have. We might have 30, we might have 20, plus the 13 or 14 of us now that we have. So we have quite a bigger group here. Plan lesson decisions are as important as the context. I would love to have some sort of assessment every class. And that can be something as simple as can we, as a group, let's say the last drill we did over here was passing back all the way through the group. Can we do that in less than a minute? Can we do that in less than 30 seconds? Can we do that in less than 20 seconds? Uh, trying to give them a goal that they are being assessed on. Or can they pass it between them and a partner this many times without losing it? Uh, something, it can be just as simple as that, or it can actually be a full out written test over what you had just taught them that day. Or I love authentic assessments, so I would say write a paragraph on Canvas of what we just went over today, which I probably will do the next time we have like Hernan come in and teach, because I don't know what they're going to teach, so I don't know how to make an assessment of it. But that's a way to just gauge their learning. Uh, another way to do it for a physical educator, which I know not m most of you are not, is I love for my elementary age kids, at the door of the gym, I have different signs that they self-assess. I need improvement. I did awesome today. Uh, I need help is like the lower one. And I just stand there and I watch as they, and if they hit, I need help, then I ask them when they go get their drinks, what they need help with. So it just gives me something. It could be something simple, could be more extravagant than that. I love it being measurable. So how many strikes can you get in a row? And it should come from the like curriculum, but we're not going to be, say, most of you aren't physical educators, so we're not going quite that far. Uh, let see, specific activities, some are more general, some are going to be more specific. So, you know, group passing, singular passing, dribbling on your own in this case. And so you kind of want your outcomes. What's your goal for the, for the class period? What equipment do you need needs to be on your lesson plan? the instructional activities that you're going to be going through. So what drills are you going to run? And oh man, you, these are the things that teaching hint. So this is all the stuff I want on that piece of paper that I have printed out and say, sometimes I will have the entire unit printed out for every single class period. We're not going to be able to be that far. And I just put it on the clipboard. And when I get to the next day, I take the top sheet and I put it on the bottom and I go for, and I just teach the next lesson. So our structure is we want an introductory warm-up activity that could last two to three minutes. Um, as I said, it sets the tone for the rest of the lesson. Say, I'm doing this one. It's probably going to be a team up with either one or two college students with a seventh or eighth grader, 
And I'm going to say, as you are, you're going to start holding a soccer ball. As you toss it between the three of you, you're going to say what your name is. Then you're going to do, what's your favorite movie? How much have you played soccer? You know, and then I'll be like, all right, now you're going to do the drop thing and hit it to another person, kick it to another person. And then that person picks it up. So I'm going to start some of those skills with it. It could be something as simple as a game of tag. Uh, just some sort of way to get them up and running. The next thing is going to be some sort of physical activity. I try my best not to do straight runs for no good reason, but there are times that that is appropriate when you're in a like fitness uh, unit. So having some sort of lifelong physical activity type thing in there, probably the easiest one to do here is going to be dribbling a ball. And so you may not actually do the physical fitness right away on the first class period. I would probably teach them to dribble a ball in place first and then do the physical fitness of going to that line and back so that they start getting some activity in there. Or maybe that'll be the end of it. So it doesn't have to be always in this order, but generally this is the order I want. Then you're going to have the lesson focus. Oh, that's the other thing. Uh, for the physical fitness and activity, if you're teaching on Thursday next week, which will be most people in this room, on Thursday, your physical fitness activity can be a review of the skills they learned last class period. So you can make, so that's where dribbling the ball to a spot and back um, is going to be a great one. Or dribble while passing to a teammate would be like in two weeks. Uh, so just kind of review what they do while getting them moving at the same time and getting their heart rates up. Then you're going to do your new focus of the day. So this is where you teach any new physical skills. And this is probably the biggest part of the lesson. Uh, this is where you would then do the drills you want them to do in that class period. Uh, so this is the part we'll probably have split between two people since it's the largest section of it. And then your closing activity is going to be some sort of um, evaluation of the day. Uh, so the first day, that's probably just going to be a discussion. Uh, but after that, you could have, that's where you can assess what they have learned. So you could have them, that's where you say, all right, let's go back to this drill. And I want us to do, can you get six passes in a row without a mistake or without it going past you? And just make that your closing activity. Um, or it could be just something like a game of three on three soccer. Uh, with some cones at the end. So like while everybody's finishing up their lesson part, you're setting up, I want two cones here, two cones here, two cones here, two cones here, and tell them you're going to play two on two, passing and try to kick it through a cone thing that's five feet wide. And again, you'd have that drawn out on a piece of paper with your teaching hands, how you want them to do it, uh, to go through there. We definitely want to have a progression. We did a great, you got a great example of a progression yesterday, or to last class period. Uh, so keeping those going through there. Any other discussion, questions? Oh, afterwards, we will always meet as a group once we send the seventh and eighth graders back to their class, and we will talk as a group how that went. What went well, what didn't go well, uh, what should the, what could I have done better is always a good thing as a teacher to go over. Uh, so how does asking this question make you a better teacher? Anybody? I know I'm blabbing too much and I do want to get out to the soccer game here and give you time to grab some chow here. Yep, and I, I, I will do that after every class period. I mean, the coaching class period that we just had two hours ago. I've already written notes down in my PowerPoint of how I'm going to do that better because there were a couple slides that were like, what in the world was that slide? That had nothing to do with it. So I had in, I already deleted those before I even closed it. So I, like every class period, I'm doing that. Uh, say strengths and weaknesses of your teachers or other things will go in there. Being a reflective teacher is a good thing. And there's a bunch of there. All right. So we're going to head out... Here you have 